All right, now we're going to shift gears and talk about blood pressure. So blood pressure is the pressure in an artery that is measured with something called a sphygmomanometer. A sphygmomanometer is a fancy word for a blood pressure cuff. And there's other ways to estimate blood pressure as well using invasive measurements. But as far as we're concerned, the main tool we're going to use today is something called the sphygmomanometer or blood pressure cuff. So there's a few different pressures we need to talk about. The first of these are probably familiar to you and they're called the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. So systolic blood pressure is the pressure uh, in the peripheral arteries when the left ventricle is contracting. And typically it's around 120 millimeters of mercury or less. On the other hand, the diastolic pressure is the pressure in those peripheral arteries when the left ventricle is relaxing. And here it's usually 80 millimeters of mercury or less. You might be asking yourself about the units here, millimeters of mercury, right? There's no mercury in your blood pressure cuff. Well, there used to be. Uh, if you went back to the doctor's office in the 1970s and 1980s, the gauge they had in there was actually filled with mercury, and that's why we get the term millimeters of mercury. Now, obviously, we've gotten away from mercury now because it is toxic, but we still keep the units as a measurement of pressure. Okay, so with systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure, we can sometimes have pressure that is too low or too high. Now, if the pressure is abnormally high, we say that person is hypertensive. So hypertension is a greater than normal blood pressure. And it used to be that a normal blood pressure was 120 over 80, or 120 systolic over 80 diastolic. Well, the American Heart Association has revised that over the last few years, and now they consider somebody with a blood pressure of 120 over 80 a little bit elevated, so that's not great. Ideally, we'd love our blood pressure to be like 110 or 115 over 75 or something like that. So that would be in the normal range. If we get into 120 range, we're elevated, and if we get above that, we get into stage 1 hypertension, stage 2 hypertension, etc. So hypertension is a problem because it could indicate uh, increased likelihood for stroke. It could indicate cardiovascular disease, heart disease. Uh, we don't want to be hypertensive. We want to treat that condition before it results in more damage to the heart and more damage to the blood vessels. So on the other hand, hypotension is a lower than normal blood pressure. Now, the American Heart Association doesn't have any one blood pressure that they consider hypotensive, but I can tell you if you have a mean arterial pressure that's lower than 70 or so, uh, that's going to indicate hypotension that needs to be addressed. So hypotension here is lower than normal blood pressure. And what are the signs? Well, we could have dizziness. We could have syncope or fainting. That's very com common. We could have blurred vision, lack of concentration. Uh, oftentimes, if you've been laying down for a while and stand up really quickly when somebody knocks on the door, you'll feel your center of vision sort of gray out and then come back again. And that's a temporary hypotension that results when blood begins to pool in the extremities, but your heart and blood vessels compensate for that by your heart beating faster and your peripheral blood vessels contracting to bring that pressure back up. Okay, other pressures we should talk about are the pulse pressure and mean arterial pressure. So the pulse pressure is simply the systolic pressure uh, minus the diastolic pressure. So if I had a systolic and diastolic of 120 over 80, my pulse pressure would simply be 40 millimeters of mercury. So ideally, the pulse pressure should be at least 25% of the systolic pressure. If it's lower than that, it could indicate stenosis or reduced uh, ejection from the ventricles. More importantly, however, we have something called mean arterial pressure, or MAP. So MAP represents the average pressure of blood in the arteries, and it's normally around 70 to 110 millimeters of mercury. If you want to memorize one number, memorize 90. 90 is sort of great for mean arterial pressure. If it's lower than 90, we start to get concerned a little bit. And again, if it's lower than 70, we get really concerned. So of all the different blood pressure measurements, MAP is most informative about tissue perfusion. Now, what does tissue perfusion mean? Well, it means supplying that tissue, all the tissues in the body, with adequate amounts of oxygenated blood to keep them alive. So if our MAP drops too low, that pressure is no longer getting blood to all the tissues of the body. And some of those tissues are going to become ischemic. Uh, they're going to have insufficient blood flow. They're going to become hypoxic, lack of oxygen. They're eventually going to die. And this can happen very, very quickly in very sensitive organs like the kidney, the brain, etc. So we always want to make sure that we have our MAP, which is up here on the vital signs monitor, uh, around the area of 90 or above. Uh, 70 would be fine too, but we don't want to go lower than 70. So to calculate mean arterial pressure, we use this equation right here to estimate it. So MAP is simply the diastolic pressure plus one third of the pulse pressure. Remember, pulse pressure was systolic over diastolic. So let's do the MAP for somebody with a pressure of 120 over 80. 
So first of all, the pulse pressure was 40 millimeters of mercury. We divide 40 by 3, and we're going to get something around 13, right? So we add 13 to the diastolic pressure, and we're going to get somewhere around 93. And 93 is a great number for mean arterial pressure. It indicates adequate perfusion of the tissues. OK, so now that we've talked about what blood pressure is, we're going to talk about how to use your sphygmomanometer, or blood pressure cuff, to assess the blood pressure of a patient. This patient can be yourself, or it can be somebody else in your family. Ideally, it's best to have a second person to measure the blood pressure on, because it's very difficult to do it yourself. But just me here today, so I'm going to do it on myself. So what I need first is my blood pressure cuff, or sphygmomanometer. So it looks like this. It oftentimes has a little bitty gauge attached to it that looks like that, but it's too small for you to see on TV, so I just detached that gauge and attached it to a much larger uh, pressure gauge in there that reads in millimeters of mercury. Now, when looking at your blood pressure cuff, before you put it on someone, you want to make sure that it's completely deflated and that the person's arm is the right size for the size of the cuff. So this is a normal adult size cuff, and that'll fit most people. If I were to use a large, that would be too large for me. And so you want to put that cuff on. And again, it's very difficult to put a cuff on yourself, but I'm going to do the best that I can. So I'm going to place my arm in here, and I'll be able to see it in just a second. So I'm holding that up. Again, this is usually one person doing the measurements, one person having the measurements recorded. I've got it as tight as I can. The air is out, and I want the blood pressure cuff itself up here on the brachium, not down on the antibrachium. So I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. Okay, and you want the shirt to be above that, if at all possible. And then you want to put the bell of your stethoscope inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stethoscope on with the earpieces facing backwards. Okay. I'm going to tap it, make sure that I can hear out of there, place it right there. And you want the tubes coming out on the anticubital space right here, okay, on the inside of the elbow. Okay. Next you want to do is get your pressure cuff, and you want to turn that little knurled knob all the way clockwise, and that's going to uh, basically close things off to where all the air that you put inside uh, that cuff stays in the cuff and doesn't come out. So what we're going to do is fill this up to around 160 millimeters of mercury, and then we're going to let off gradually by turning this a little bit counterclockwise, and then as that pressure drops down on the sphygmomanometer, uh, I should start to hear heartbeats at some point. Now, what you're doing essentially is putting air in here until it creates a tourniquet and is cutting off all the blood flow to the posterior, or sorry, to the uh, distal extremity. And so as I let off that pressure, eventually some blood is going to eat past there, and those are the sounds of Kortkopf. And basically it's letting us know that we're now below the systolic pressure. So the pressure at which I first hear a heartbeat or a pulse rushing past the stethoscope is the systolic pressure. And I keep letting that off. And eventually, uh, there's a pressure at which I no longer hear anything, and that's the diastolic pressure. So let's try to find that out. OK, I start to hear it now. And what you can notice, look at that, that meter, you might see a little needle knock on there. A needle knock indicates that blood is rushing past there. And so when we first see that needle knock, it's probably going to be our systolic pressure. And the point at which that goes away becomes our diastolic pressure. Again, it's hard for me to talk and measure all at one time, so I'm going to take my next measurement and just be quiet and try to get a good, accurate blood pressure measurement. There's my start. There's my stop. Okay. So I'll have to go back and look at the film and see what that looks like, but you can tell my blood pressure is slightly elevated today, and I can tell you why. Energy drinks. So got to be careful with those. They can cause uh, tachycardia and also can temporarily uh, elevate your blood pressure.
Okay, in the previous demonstration, you couldn't really hear what was going on in my stethoscope. So what I brought in here today is a Doppler uh, blood monitor, and that's gonna let you hear the blood uh, rushing past in my radial artery. So I'm gonna put this on right now before my cuff is inflated. You can hear a pretty good pulse going right now. And now I'm gonna go ahead and inflate my cuff. Now I've got the tourniquet on, so I'm going to let off a little bit. Okay, that parries my systolic pressure. And I keep letting down. You can see the needle knock, gradually letting off. And then there would be a period with your stethoscope at which it would become fainter and fainter, and you would no longer hear that, and that would be your diastolic pressure. Now, technically, with this Doppler monitor, I can actually detect blood flow all the way down to the zero mark, but it can still let us hear that systolic pressure. And again, you can see my systolic pressure is elevated, so time to get to the doctor's office.